Hafid rode slowly, his head bowed so that he no longer noticed the star spreading its path of light before him. Why had he committed such a foolish act? He knew not those people in the cave. Why had he not attempted to sell the robe to them? What would he tell Pathros? And the others? They would roll on the ground with laughter when they learned he had given away a robe with which he had been charged. And to a strange baby in a cave. He searched his mind for a tale that would deceive Pathros. Perhaps he could say that the robe had been stolen from his animal while he was in the dining hall. Would Pathros believe such a tale? After all, there were many bandits in the land. And should Pathros believe him would he not then be condemned for carelessness? All too soon he reached the path that led through the Garden of Gethsemane. He dismounted and walked wearily ahead of the mule until he arrived at the caravan. The light from above made it seem as daylight and the confrontation he had been dreading was quickly upon him as he saw Pathros, outside his tent, staring into the heavens. Hathid remained motionless but the old man noticed him almost immediately. There was awe in the voice of Pathros as he approached the youth and asked, Have you come directly from Bethlehem? Yes, master. Are you not alarmed that a star should follow you? I had not noticed, sire. Had not noticed. I have been unable to move from this spot since I first saw that star rise over Bethlehem nearly two hours ago. Never have I seen one with more color and brightness. Then as I watched, it began to move in the heavens and approach our caravan. Now that it is directly overhead, you appear, and by the gods, it moves no more. Pathros approached Hafid and studied the youth's face closely as he asked, Did you participate in some extraordinary event while in Bethlehem? No, sire. The old man frowned as if deep in thought. I have never known a night or an experience such as this. Hafid flinched. This night I shall never forget either, master. Oh, ho, then something did indeed happen this evening. How is it that thou returneth at such a late hour? Hafid was silent as the old man turned and prodded at the pack on Hafid's mule. It is empty. Success at last. Come into my tent and tell me of your experiences. Since the gods have turned night into day I cannot sleep and perhaps your words will furnish some clue as to why a star should follow a camel boy. Pathros reclined on his cot and listened with closed eyes to Hafid's long tale of endless refusals, rebuffs, and insults which had been encountered in Bethlehem. Occasionally he would nod as when Hafid described the pottery merchant who had thrown him bodily from his shop and he smiled when told of the Roman soldier who had flung the robe back in Hafid's face when the young seller had refused to reduce his price. Finally Hafid, his voice hoarse and muffled, was describing all the doubts that had beset him in the inn this very evening. Pathros interrupted him, Hafid, as well as you can recall, relate to me every doubt that passed through your mind as you sat feeling sorry for yourself. When Hafid had named them all to the best of his recollection, the old man asked, Now, what thought finally entered your mind which drove away the doubts and gave you new courage to decide to try again to sell the robe on the morrow? Hafid considered his reply for a moment and then said, I thought only of the daughter of Kalna. Even in that foul inn I knew that I could never face her again if I failed. Then Hafid's voice broke, But I failed her, anyway. You failed. I do not understand. The robe did not return with thee. In a voice so low that Pathros found it necessary to lean forward in order to hear, Hafid related the incident of the cave, the infant, and the robe. As the youth spoke, Pathros glanced again and again at the open tent flap and the brightness beyond which still illuminated the campgrounds. A smile began to form on his puzzled face and he did not notice that the lad had ceased with his story and was now sobbing. Soon the sob subsided and there was only silence in the great tent. Hafid dared not look up at his master. He had failed and proven that he was ill-equipped to be anything more than a camel boy. He fought back the urge to leap up and run from the tent. Then he felt the great salesman's hand on his shoulder and forced himself to look into the eyes of Pathros. My son, this trip has not been of much profit to you. 
No, sire. But to me it has. The star which followed you has cured me of a blindness that I am reluctant to admit. I will explain this matter to you only after we return to Palmyra. Now I make a request of thee. Yes, master. Our sellers will begin returning to the caravan before sundown tomorrow and their animals will need your care. Are you willing to return to your duties as camel boy for the present? Hafid rose resignedly and bowed toward his benefactor. Whatever you ask of me, that I will do. And I am sorry that I have failed you. Go then, and prepare for the return of our men and we shall meet again when we are in Palmyra. As Hafid stepped through the tent opening, bright light from above momentarily blinded him. He rubbed his eyes and heard Pathros call from inside the tent. The youth turned and stepped back inside, waiting for the old man to speak. Pathros pointed toward him and said, Sleep in peace for you have not failed. The bright star remained above throughout the night. 